we have been studying the synchronization transient of a synchronous machine connected to an infinite bus. What we saw last time was that uh, uh, you can uh, have a near bumpless synchronization of a synchronous machine to an infinite bus which is essentially a fixed voltage source. The machine locks on to the frequency of the synchronize uh, of the infinite bus in case it is synchronized well. Now, uh, the thing we noticed last time was that if the speed of the machine initially is almost uh, the same as that of the infinite bus and at the instant of uh, uh, you know uh, the interconnection the voltage open circuit voltage of the generator the voltage phasor you can say is uh, practically the same as the infinite bus voltage phasor then you get a kind of a bumpless transfer. Okay. Of course, uh, you cannot get in perfect uh, transfer without transients, it is uh, practically not possible. There will be some transient because you cannot do this match which I mentioned some time back exactly. So, uh, what you really see is that when you connect a synchronous machine to an infinite bus, you do get a small synchronization transient. Uh, most notably, you notice a, a kind of a, a what is known as a swing mode or a low frequency oscillation uh, which usually damps down uh, and that really after that the synchronous machine is in synchronism with the uh, voltage source. Thereafter, if you increase the mechanical torque uh, to the synchronous uh, machine, you find that the machine transfers power from, from itself to uh, the voltage source or the infinite bus. So, uh, what you notice there of course, is that as you go on increasing the uh, mechanical power, you will find that uh, the, ro uh, the angle delta increases okay. and uh, in fact, there comes a point after which if you try to increase the mechanical power, the synchronous machine in fact, uh, loses synchronism. There is uh, uh, it kind of fails to reach a steady state in case you go on increasing the mechanical power beyond a point. Okay. Of course, the important uh, thing is that uh, we had in fact seen uh, uh, precisely such a transient in one of our uh, lectures. In fact, the first lecture I had shown you a, a small demonstration clip. It will be good to revisit that clip. We can go back to the first lecture and see that clip. That is precisely what we have tried to simulate, uh, try to simulate in the 21st lecture. That is a synchronous machine connected to a infinite bus and therein, thereafter we go on increasing the mechanical power to a point at which it loses synchronism. One of the things which we did not do when we increased the mechanical power was uh, or the mechanical torque to the synchronous machine was that we did not uh, increase the field voltage simultaneously. In fact, a synchronous machine tends to lose synchronism very easily in case you try to load it without a concurrent increase in the field voltage. Okay. So, what we will do this in this lecture is uh, we will first of all uh, revisit this uh, earlier transient uh, in which we first give a small step, uh, we first synchronize the machine then give a small step in the mechanical power of 0.25 per unit and then we try to increase the mechanical power right up to its rated value of 1 per unit and there uh, we do not increase the field voltage, we will see that it loses synchronism. Thereafter, we will redo this uh, simulation with uh, by increasing the field voltage concurrently that is uh, at the same time uh, as we uh, rather at this uh, we increase the field voltage simultaneously perhaps simultaneously is a better word. We increase the field voltage simultaneously along with the mechanical torque. You will find that under such circumstances the, the generator is able to supply uh, the rated power uh, to the infinite bus. Okay. Now, uh, one small clarification of course, uh, I hope uh, did, you did not miss it last time was that when we are simulating the uh, equations of a synchronous machine, we are neglecting the stator transients or the stator flux transients. That is, we have replaced d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t uh, by 0. The reason is of course, that the transients associated with uh, these states psi d and psi q are very fast. So, what we have done essentially is replace the differential equations uh, which relate 
the psi d and psi q fluxes by algebraic equations. One thing you should uh, note here is that an implicit thing is that when I am making this assumption, uh, I am really interested in the slower electromechanical transit. That is why I can do without uh, the psi d and psi q uh, differential equations, replace them in fact by the algebraic equations okay, and still get a reasonably correct result. Okay. Now, uh, you may ask that well, why uh, do I do it anyway? You can just as well keep the differential equations corresponding to psi d and psi q. The reason why of course, I have done that is if I retain uh, the differential equations in, d psi, uh, in psi d and psi q, you get what is known as a stiff system that is a mixture of fast and tra slow transients are existing in that system. And as a result of which simple numerical integration schemes are likely to misbehave. So, what I have really done is I have made this approximation of neglecting the fast transients removed in some sense the stiffness of the system and then used uh, Euler method, which is the simplest method to simulate the system. Okay. So, that is why I have done this. If, if of course, I had used, uh, I had retained the stiffness in the system, that is I had retained the d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t terms in the equations. In such a case, you would find that uh, you would need to use a method like trapezoidal rule or backward Euler method. Now, the problem in doing that is once you discretize the differential equations with trapezoidal rule or backward Euler method, remember these are nonlinear differential equations, then what you really get is our nonlinear algebraic equations. Once you discretize the system by, a, uh, by these numerical methods, you get nonlinear algebraic equations and for every time step, I would need to uh, solve numerically solve for every time step I would numerically have to solve the algebraic equations. Okay. On the other hand Euler method is simple and uh, uh, the per time step computation is very very straightforward. Okay. So, that is what um, we have done so far. Today I uh, will try to simultaneously increase the field voltage along with the torque increase okay. and we can see that in such a case you can in fact uh, run the synchronous machine uh, uh, at rated power. Okay. So, let us just uh, redo the transient we did last time okay, and go ahead and simulate uh, the transient with field voltage increase simultaneously. Okay. So, let us go on to that. So, today's lecture of course, we will be revisiting the transient associated with the synchronization of a synchronous machine. Now, uh, what we will do is of course, like in the previous lectures, we will uh, do a simulation of this system. Okay. So, let me just show you the simulation file here. Okay. This is gen underscore sync is the file. I will be doing a 25 second simulation. I will be synchronizing the machine at 0.2 seconds. This of course, is the you see the data of the machine. This is something we have done uh, quite a few times before in this in these lectures. So, I will just quickly skim through this. As the mechanical power is changed to 1 per unit, we also double the field voltage. So, simultaneously we double the field voltage and uh, we will redo this transient. Redo this simulation here. and I plot now the speed and you notice that in this particular case, the machine regains or rather is still in synchronism. Okay. So, by increasing the field voltage in some sense, we have ensured that the machine is able to deliver the rated power okay, and uh, remain in synchronism and operate stably. Okay. Of course, these uh, there is a electromechanical oscillation or a swing which is seen in the speed whenever we uh, give any such disturbance. Now, we can of course, have a look at how delta looks as well. Yeah. So, for the first disturbance of course, delta goes from 0 to 0 0.4 roughly this is radians and the second transient also it is stable there is a swing and there is a 
gradual rise as well uh, rather a, a kind of a oscillate decaying oscillation which we see here and also a decaying exponent i mean there's also this kind of rise because of which it settles finally near about one uh, radian okay so this is basically how the system behaves in case we increase the mechanical power along with a change in the field voltage if we do not change the field voltage along with the mechanical power the system can lose synchronism so that is one uh, important thing you should remember in the next uh, uh, next few lectures we'll go on to talking about excitation systems in the sense that we'll try to understand how the field voltage is changed uh, uh, by uh, by a control system or an, uh, a control system and an excitation system okay field voltage in a synchronous machine changes along with the loading in fact we engineer it in such a way that whenever the loading of a synchronous machine changes the field voltage is also changed okay it's in fact very necessary to do so okay so this is something you should keep in mind now what we'll do next is uh, look at um, another form of analysis what we will do is uh, do a kind of small signal analysis of a synchronous machine so far what we have been doing here is in fact looking at the a numerical simulation of the system the reason why we do a numerical simulation is that the system is non linear now we can in fact uh, do a linearized analysis around an operating point okay using eigen analysis the eigen analysis tool as we have done before uh, the only difference here uh, is that since this is non linear we have to first convert the system into a, a linearized system around an operating point so what we'll be really doing is since this is a non linear system uh, we cannot infer the non linear behavior by eigen analysis that is not possible but what we can do is if you are at an operating point that is at an equilibrium point if you give small disturbances you can rewrite the equations in a linear form okay which is valid only for small disturbances and infer the behavior from the eigen values of the resulting linear differential equations okay so this is what we will uh, do next at this point uh, uh, we should look at where are actually the non linearities in our equations let's have a look now if you look at uh, the equations of a synchronous machine uh, we had we have been using these compact form of equations uh, in our analysis that is first of all we have written the flux equations d by dt of the flux equations is equal to a1 into the flux so this is the state space form of the flux equations remember that a1 is a function of speed okay so actually although this is written it looks almost as if it's linear a1 is actually a function of the state of the states okay speed is a state of the system remember that uh, this is written in a kind of a composite form id iq are in fact related to all the fluxes by another set of equations the in fact the inductance uh, effectively the inductance matrices or the reactance matrices in per unit okay these equations are of course in per unit form a1 ha looks like this okay it is in fact lean, uh, uh, non linear because a1 itself is a function of the states okay so a1 into psi involves effectively product terms of speed and flux so that is why it's basically a set of non linear equations okay so there is a non linearity here in fact these are of course the definitions of a1 uh, the a1 b1 b2 a3 okay so one of the things you'll uh, notice here is of course i think i have i have, I have effectively written the torque equation if you look at it in per unit this also involves speed product terms okay so if you look at the basic compact equations of a synchronous machine this is a product kind of term a1 contains a is a function of the states and also the torque equation in per unit is a non linear equation 
Okay. So, when we are trying to use uh, Eigen analysis tools, remember that the mechanical and electrical equations are in fact coupled okay? and uh, you see the flux and current equations in the mechanical equations and in the flux equations there is a uh, omega dependence. Okay? So, because of this nonlinearity, we cannot directly apply linear analysis. Okay? We will have to do a linearization around an equilibrium point. So, the basic idea is Suppose you are operating at a particular equilibrium point. Okay? So, for example, if you look at the mechanical equations, two h by omega b d omega by d t is equal to T m minus psi d i q minus psi q i d. Now, if you look at this, this is a nonlinear equation. Okay. Now, if we are operating at a certain equilibrium point and the equilibrium values of psi d is psi d e. Similarly, the equilibrium value of psi q is psi q e and uh, of course, i q and i d are dependent on the equilibrium values of psi f e in addition to these psi f e, psi g e, psi k e and psi h e. Okay? So, these are the equilibrium points. Okay? So, this e here is uh, denoting equilibria. Okay? So, this is the equilibrium value of these states. Okay? So, if you look at you write, rewrite these equations again, if you are speed equilibrium speed of a synchronous machine connected to an infinite bus is well if you look at d delta by d t it is nothing but omega minus omega 0 this is the frequency of the infinite bus okay okay so if you look at what is the equilibrium speed of the machine? The equilibrium speed of the machine is omega e and by definition of equilibria, equilibria are the value of the states at which all the d by d t is become equal to 0. Okay? So, uh, if you look at omega e, it should be equal to omega naught. Okay? So, the value of omega at equilibrium is omega e, it is equal to omega naught. Okay? So, these are essentially the equilibrium values of the states. Okay? So, equilibria are actually obtained by setting d delta by d t, uh, uh, d omega by d t and all the d psi by d t is equal to 0. Okay? Now, uh, what are the equilibrium values of, what are the actual values of psi d, psi q e, psi f e and so on? What is the equilibrium of value of delta E, for example? What is the equilibrium value of delta? So, uh, these are all the states. So, one of the equilibrium value we have of course, got. Then there are six flux states for which we have to get the equilibrium values and delta equilibrium value has to be obtained. Now, remember that uh, we had obtained the expression for the electrical torque. If you recall, what is the electrical torque expression? The electrical torque expression was in steady state of a synchronous machine was electrical torque under equilibrium conditions is of course, it is psi d e i q e minus psi q e i d e, but we can write it down as we have derived this in some of our previous lectures sin delta e upon x d plus 1 upon x q minus 1 upon x d into v line to line r m s square pi 2 sin 2 delta e. So, the equilibrium value of the torque is nothing but E f d this is depending on the field voltage v line to line r m s is the voltage line to line r m s voltage of the voltage source to which the synchronous machine is connected to delta e of course is the equilibrium angle 
Now, the important thing is that this is this, this if you look at psi d e psi d i q minus psi q i d, this is essentially an equilibrium or rather the transient uh, this expression for torque is valid also in transient conditions. Okay. But this remember this expression here which I have written down is only valid during steady state. So, please do not use it for transient conditions. Okay. So, under equilibrium conditions this is true. So, if I set d delta by d t is equal to 0, we, we get the equilibrium value of omega should be equal to omega naught. Also by setting d omega by d t equal to 0, we get T m should be equal to the equilibrium value of this. Okay. Now, if we know what E f d is and what V line to line R m s is, from this we can easily back calculate what the value of delta E is. Okay. So, I know what T E E is T m. So, if I have given you what the mechanical torque is and what the E f d is, in such a case you should be able to compute delta E. So, first state second state is computed. Okay. This is the equilibrium values of omega e and delta e. Okay. Thereafter, once you have you know the equilibrium value of omega is omega e. Okay. Also, you have got the equations of the, the differential equations corresponding to the fluxes. So, if you look at them here, I have written them down in compact form here. So, you set this equal to 0. Okay. A 1 is a function of the time constants as well as omega, but you know that the equilibrium value of omega is omega e. So, you get an equation. So, you can evaluate what a 1 is. This is set to 0. A 2 into i d i q. i d i q itself is a function of psi d and psi q. It is a linear function. So, a 2 into a 3 into psi basically, because i d i q itself is related by this expression. Thereafter, if you look at b 1. So, b 1 is also a constant matrix. V d and V q in fact, if you look at what I am writing here, V d we have seen before. Uh, by the definition of the voltage source, uh, we, have, we wrote down the time, uh, the the volt, the voltage of the infinite bus in terms of V A, V B, V C. As per that definition, V D will come out to be minus V line to line R M S into sin delta E, and V Q comes out to be V line to line R M S into cos delta E. So this is of course. Uh, obtained, uh, we have obtained this before in our course. Uh, remember that the rotor position is nothing but omega naught t plus delta. Okay. So, this is the definition of the rotor position. Omega naught is the speed of the infinite bus okay. and because of that and the definition of V a n, V b n and V c n, the phase to neutral voltages of the infinite bus, uh, we obtain V d and V q in this form. Okay. So, what I wish to stay, uh, what I wish to say here is that first of all we have got the equilibrium value of the speed, then we have got the equilibrium value of delta e. From equilibrium value of speed and delta e, we can from the flux equations which are shown here by setting the right hand side uh, sorry the left hand side here equal to 0 okay that's put setting d by dt equal to 0 obtain the equilibrium values of psi d psi q psi f psi h psi g and psi k so this is basically what uh, is involved in getting first the equilibrium values once you've got the equilibrium values in order to do a small signal or a small disturbance an analysis around an equilibrium point what we really need to do is reformulate the equations or linearize the equations which is suitable for such small disturbance analysis. So, for example, we have got d by d t 
of the flux okay, is equal to A 1 into the flux and so on. Okay. Now, what we do is we assume that the fluxes we are considering only small disturbances from the equilibrium. So, we will assume that psi d e plus delta psi. Okay. So, this is the equilibrium value of the flux and this is the deviation from it. So, we can reformulate the differential equations in terms of only the deviations around the equilibrium. Now, if these deviations are small, one can do a procedure called linearization. Okay. So, I will just show you the linearization procedure for a simple case 2 h we will just look at this equation you can actually linearize every equation equal to T m minus psi d i q minus psi q i d. This is of course, a nonlinear term. Okay. Now, we assume omega is equal to omega equilibrium plus the deviation from the equilibrium. Okay. This is a known quantity. Okay. So, we can reformulate these equations, you can write this as 2 h by omega b d of omega e plus delta omega. Omega e is a constant, it is the equilibrium value of the speed. So, what we will do is is equal to okay, T m, we will assume that T m is a constant minus psi d i q minus psi q i d. Now, psi d i q minus psi q i d in fact can be written down as. So, it is psi e psi d e plus delta psi d okay, into i q e plus delta i q minus psi q e plus delta psi q into i d e plus delta i d. Okay. So, this becomes if you neglect well first let us write it down. So, what you can write it down is psi d e i q e minus psi q e i d e plus psi d e delta i q plus psi q e delta i d sorry this should be a minus plus delta psi d e sorry I am sorry delta psi d into i q e minus delta psi q into i d e okay. plus what are second order terms. that is product of two delta kind of terms. Note that psi d e into i q e minus psi q e into i d e is in fact equal to the equilibrium value of the torque electrical torque which is of course, going to be equal to the mechanical torque T m. So, psi d e into i q e minus psi q e into i d e is in fact T m. So, what we have essentially is the linearized equation 2 h by omega b into delta. If you assume that T m is a constant in fact, you can write this as psi d e delta i d minus psi q e delta i q plus delta psi d i d e minus delta psi q i q e. Okay. So, uh, this is just an example of how you can do linearization. So, you can in fact linearize the d psi d by d t equation and the d psi q by d t equation in a similar fashion. So, what you eventually get is uh, you, you know you have to couple of course, the mechanical and electrical equations the flux equations are coupled. So, finally, what you will get is going to be delta x in the linearized states assuming of course, delta T m is equal to 0 and delta E f d is equal to 0. So, we will be assuming the inputs are constant we will be only giving 
uh, changes in delta x that is the giving the initial condition or initial disturbances to the states. Okay. So, around the equilibrium point okay, the behavior of the equations for small disturbances can be studied using this. So, I have just shown you how you can do the linearization. Okay. So, I request you to go ahead go back and just try to do the full system linearization and get it in the form delta x dot is equal to a into delta x. The properties of the transients for small disturbances around the equilibrium can be got just by analyzing the eigen properties that is the eigen values and eigen vectors of the resulting state matrix the A matrix. Of course, A now is dependent on the equilibrium point because it really has terms like psi d e and so on. Okay but is a constant for that equilibrium point it is a constant, okay? but it is a function of the value of the states at the equilibrium point. So, one of the things you should remember is that a nonlinear system which is linearized and then we uh, if we do nonlinearized uh, rather linearized analysis on it eigen analysis on, on it, what we will see is that the eigen values which we get for different equilibrium points are going to be different. So, the transient behavior around different equilibrium points in fact, is going to be different. Okay, It is not going to be the same. Did we actually notice this in our simulations? The answer is yes. So, let us look at the simulations again carefully. So, back to the simulations. If you notice even uh, one of the plots which I had shown you, yeah, maybe we can have a look at the speed transient. Okay. Well, you may say well there is no difference in uh, the kind of behavior around an equilibrium point you have these swings, but one of the simple things you can have actually look at look for rather is whether there is any change in the frequency of the swings. For example, the frequency of the springs uh, swings I uh, will just do you do this again one second we will just get this back here. Yeah. If you look at the frequency of swings around this equilibrium point. I will just yeah. you look at the frequency of the swings around this equilibrium point you will find that it is well almost half a second. So, this is almost a 2 hertz oscillation okay, around the equilibrium point corresponding to I am sorry yeah around the equilibrium corris point corresponding to T m is equal to 1 and E f d is equal to 2 the frequency of oscillations is in fact frequency of oscillations is in fact around 2 hertz. Okay. What about the frequency near about the equilibrium corresponding to T m is equal to 0.25 and E f d is equal to 1. So, let us just have a look at that here. Okay. So, if you look at that this is a roughly 6 point 0.1 seconds and this is roughly well this is near about slightly more than the frequency the period is more than 0.5 it in fact the frequency seems to be lesser near about T m is equal to 0.25 per unit. Okay. And if you look at the behavior just after synchronization when mechanical power is in fact 0 the frequency of oscillation is is again roughly uh, 0 0.7 yeah so with tm is equal to 0 the frequency is slightly uh, uh, lesser in fact the period is larger and with uh, larger values of, of tm with of course a simultaneous increase of uh, efd we see that the frequency in fact slightly increases. In fact, it is higher here compared to here. So, as the operating point changes, uh, we get a change in frequency. That is not surprising because the eigenvalues change because the A matrix whose eigenvalues we are computing is a function of the equilibrium values of the states, okay, which are obtained after linearization. So, that is basically why this happens. In fact, one more striking thing which uh, you can observe from this plot 
in fact all the plots reveal a great deal of information, you will notice that the rate of decay of this oscillation is much much slower compared to the decay of oscillation here. In no time you will find that this reaches equilibrium whereas, this takes several seconds to reach an equilibrium. So, what one can expect after doing a linear analysis an Eigen value analysis we will do that shortly of course, is that we can uh, infer that whether this frequency is going to change, uh, whether the damping is going to change and so on from that analysis itself. Okay. So, uh, let us just verify that by actually writing down an uh, analysis Eigen value analysis program. So, as I mentioned some time back of course, it involves some, some uh, deal of effort in the sense that you will have to linearize the set of equations form the A matrices okay, or the A matrix of the system okay, which is a function of the equilibrium point. Okay. So, this is something you, you will have to do. Now, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the points which I need to of course, clarify this point, uh, the A matrix which you are going to get here uh, would be initially we will include the d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t transient. We will not convert the d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t differential equations into algebraic equations. We will first consider all of them together. So, what we are really looking at is a model in which you are going to have this set of equations. Okay. So, this set of equations is what we are going to consider with the differential equations in psi d and psi q retained. We are not neglecting or replacing d psi d and d psi q by d t equal to 0, but we can always do that. In case we do that, we will be converting two of these differential equations to algebraic equations allowing us to eliminate two of these variables. Okay. So, two algebraic equations when we get we can write psi d and psi q in terms of the other states and get rid of them and reduce the number of differential equa differential equations. We in fact, did this uh, when we were doing the numerical simulation in order to remove the stiffness. When you are doing an Eigen analysis, there is no compelling reason to remove the stiffness of the system, okay. removing the, uh, the uh, situation where they are fast and slow transients. That is what I mean when I say removing stiffness. When you are doing Eigen analysis, there is no compelling reason. Whereas, for simulation, if you want to use simple numerical integration methods, then you have to remove the numeri uh, the stiffness in the equations. Okay. So, let us now do an Eigen analysis of the system. I have written down a program again in Scilab for doing the Eigen analysis. We will just run through it. The important differences between an Eigen value analysis program and uh, a simulation program is that of course, we are talking in terms of a system operating initially at an equilibrium. Okay. So, for example, if we took a look at the equilibrium T m is equal to 0 and E f d is equal to 1. From this, so I have saved this, from this we could need, we would need to calculate the equilibrium value of the state corresponding to speed, but we know that omega e is equal to omega naught, which is equal to the infinite bus frequency. Okay. That is of course, the equilibrium value of the speed. The equilibrium value of delta has to be obtained by solving this equation. Okay. Omega naught and omega b will of course, assume to be the same. The speed of the infinite bus will assume to be equal to the base value of the frequency. So, we can solve for delta. Once we solve for delta, we can also using the algebraic equations, okay, using the algebraic equations solve for fluxes and once we solve for fluxes, we can get the equilibrium values. Once we get the equilibrium values, we have to form the A matrices from our linearized equations. Okay. So, for example, if you look at this equation uh, or let me just in this equation you realize that the components of the A matrix eventually what I call is A f is consisting of the equilibrium values delta 0. Okay. So, remember that linearized matrices are a function of the states, okay, the equilibrium values of the states. So, what we will do is now 
run this Eigen analysis program. I encourage you to try it out yourself. You try to create write a program to do the linearized analysis. So, I will just run it for you here. Okay, just one sec. Remember that we are doing the Eigen analysis of a system around T m is equal to 0 and E f d is equal to 1. So, one thing what we will do is what is the equilibrium value of delta 0? The answer is 0. Of course, if mechanical power is 0, T m is equal to 0, you can directly infer from the steady state torque equation that delta 0 is equal to 0. Okay? Now, if I find out the Eigen values of the system, okay? the Eigen values of a system linearized around the equilibrium point corresponding to T m is equal to 0, what we find is, okay, what we find is the Eigen values are as seen here. Okay. What we see is, you have got these two Eigen values which are very large in magnitude. Okay. They are almost 314 radians per second as discussed in the short circuit analysis of, of a synchronous machine. These are actually corresponding to the d psi d by, you know, they are very much associated with the psi d and psi q states. Okay. You will find that these two sort of new Eigen values are coming because of the inclusion of the electromechanical equations. The mechanical equations contribute the equations uh, corresponding to omega and delta. Okay. So, basically you get these two extra Eigen values compared to the Eigen value analysis of a short circuited synchronous machine. Okay. These two extra Eigen values in fact, indicate that you should be having a damped oscillation of frequency 9.4 radians per second. Okay. So, 9.4 radians per second corresponds to divided by 2 pi corresponds to 1.49 hertz. Okay. So, 1 upon 1.49 hertz is in fact, 0.67 seconds, which is the period of the oscillation corresponding to T m is equal to zero. Okay, so if you look at this again, this frequency out here should be around 0 0.7. That's what eigenvalue analysis predicts. So is it actually true? Look at it again. Yeah, this is around 1.5. 6 and this is roughly 2.4. Okay. So, that is around near about 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 seconds. So, actually what we are getting through Eigen analysis is in fact quite accurate. Okay. Also, you can see the rate of change of the peaks. Okay. Rather, you can see that the peak value of this oscillation keeps decaying with time. Okay. I leave this as an exercise to you to verify that the real part of this Eigen value corresponds to the rate of decay which is seen in this figure. Okay. We redo the Eigen analysis with E f t is equal to 2 and T m is equal to 1. So, we save this and re redo it. Oops. So, what we need to do is of course, yeah. So, if you take out the Eigen values, you will find that the Eigen values, you, the most striking thing you will notice is that the frequency of oscillations has increased. The damping has come down, this real part, negative real part magnitude has come down. So, what one, uh, one can get from the simulation essentially is, uh, what one should see in the simulation is that the damping is, this is of course, the plot of delta. You see that the damping is much faster near the 
T m is equal to 0 case as compared to the damping near T m is equal to 1. So, this is the plot of delta remember the frequency of oscillations here is higher than the frequency of oscillations here. Okay. So, of course, uh, we can also see this in omega the, the, the simulation of omega. So, I will just redo this and plot and plot omega. So, I will just remove this and plot omega. So, the same thing is of course, seen in omega remember the same modes are being seen in different all the diff, all almost all the states. So, what you see in delta the same modal characteristics are seen in omega. So, you see that the frequency at different equilibria are different and the damping also is, is different I mean this takes longer to damp out compared to the damping here. Okay. So, the real part of the eigenvalue near T m is equal to 0 can be expected to be larger then the real part negative real part of course, the magnitude is lower in this. This is actually true. Okay. So, this is uh, basically a good correlation between Eigen analysis and the simulation. Okay. So, this is what we see here. In fact, if you look at the value of delta 0 here from the Eigen analysis, sorry uh, the computation of I will have to redo the Eigen analysis program. Okay. So, the value of delta equilibrium value of delta uh, when T m is equal to 0 and E f d is equal to 1 is 1.09 radian. So, the actually we can convert this radian value to a degree value in fact, it is 62 degrees. Okay. So, uh, in fact, if you look at the simulation we will redo the simulation and uh, plot the value of delta. Okay. So, what we will do is this is of course, omega we will plot the value of delta with T m is equal to. So, if you look at the simulation, the simulation also if you look at the value of delta which to which this settles down is also near 1.09. So, what you are really seeing is a good correlation between the numerical simulation as well as the Eigen analysis of a system linearized around an equilibrium point. Okay. So, this is an interesting study in which we have actually done the linear analysis also of the synchronization transient. So, uh, I hope you got the hang of what was what we were trying to do. Uh, we could really uh, it is very interesting you know uh, when you do a simulation you get a certain time response plot, but uh, you feel a great deal of joy when you are able to correlate it with uh, uh, Eigen value analysis, which one uh, many of us feel that is a more analytically and uh, it gives better insight. Okay. So, it is important whenever you do a numerical simulation, uh, whenever you study a transient, it is very important to interpret the results which are coming correctly and you should be able to correlate it with the kind of inferences you get from other tools. So, I hope you uh, got a flavor of this in this lecture. In the next lecture, uh, we will try to do a simplified I uh, will I'll try to introduce you to some simplified models of a synchronous machine. In fact, we have used what is uh, probably a full blown model in all our analysis so far. We will try to do the reverse thing what we will do is try to make more and more simplifications and come down to a bare bone model uh, or rather the classical model uh, with which we had actually done some very simple studies right at the beginning of our course. So, we will really know uh, by looking at uh, what kind of simplifications we have done, we can arrive at the toy model which we considered right at the beginning of the course. That itself is a nice exercise where we come to know what all we have actually brushed under the carpet in order to get a simple toy model. Before we move on, we will discuss again uh, the general linearization procedure for small signal analysis of a nonlinear system around an equilibrium point. Okay. So, although I have done uh, the linearization of this system, uh, it would be good for you to be familiar uh, and and at ease with the general linearization procedure. Okay. So, if you, if you have say a nonlinear system of this kind x dot x 1 dot 
is nothing but d x 1 by d t and you have got n variables of this kind then the general nonlinear equations are given as shown in the screen on the screen. Now, the equilibrium points for this system are obtained by setting uh, x 1 dot x 2 dot and so on equal to 0. Okay. Of course, uh, in this uh, nonlinear system u denotes the inputs. Okay. So, if I have given the inputs that is u 1 0, u m 0 are specified, okay, those are the nominal inputs which are given for this equilibrium point, then the equilibrium values of the states may be obtained from these algebraic equations. These again are nonlinear algebraic equations. The equilibrium points are obtained by solving these nonlinear algebraic equations. Remember that more than one set of equilibrium states may satisfy the above equation. So, you have may have more than one set. Okay. Now, in the general linearization procedure, we will try to uh, we will choose the set which is of interest. I mean uh, you are really going to do small signal analysis around an equilibrium point. So, you have to decide the equilibrium point. So, choose the set which is of interest. After that, you need to take each differential equation, each nonlinear differential equation and linearize it. Okay. So, what uh, this involves, I mean uh, what, what eventually it, uh, you, you need to do is obtain the partial derivatives of f 1 with respect to the states x 1, x 2 to x n as well as the inputs u 1 to u m. Okay. Now, remember that these partial derivatives are evaluated using the equilibrium values of the states. So, these partial derivatives are essentially constants. Okay. Remember of course, that delta x 1 here is a small disturbance from equilibrium. Okay. So, delta x 1 is equal to x 1 minus x 1 e okay, or the deviation from the equilibrium. Similarly, delta u is equal to u 1 minus u 1 0. Okay. u 1 0 is the nominal input. Okay. So, this is what you get as a linearized equation. Okay. Now, uh, in my previous uh, development, we, we just uh, for example, linearized psi d i q minus psi q i d. You may say that well, this looks different from that. No, actually if you take out the partial derivatives of the of the function psi d i q minus psi q i d okay, and plug in the equilibrium values, you are going to get exactly the same linear model as we got some time back. Okay. So, in fact, this is a more general and direct uh, you know representation of what we will get if we apply this linearization with delta x and delta u very small. Okay. So, this is how you would normally linearize a, a set of nonlinear differential equations around an equilibrium point. Okay. So, this uh, fact will become clear uh, shortly. Remember of course, that you have to linearize each differential equation right from x 1 to x n and uh, therefore, eventually you will get in fact, a Jacobian matrix. Okay. So, you know you do this for x 1, but you can also do it for the other x, x 2, x 3 to x n and eventually you will get this delta x is equal to a into delta x plus b into delta u. Okay. This a and b of course, are these matrices. Okay. Note that these are effectively constant matrices, because these partial derivatives are evaluated at the equilibrium point. So, equilibrium point essentially is the denotes the values of the states. Okay. So, you have to plug in the values of the states. Okay. Now, this will become clear if you consider this example, x 1 dot is equal to x 2 and x 2 dot is equal to u minus sin x 1. Okay. So, this is a nonlinear set of equations. The nonlinearity obviously, is because of the sign term. Okay. So, the first step in doing this is find the equilibrium points. For the nominal input 0 0.5, the equilibrium point is sin inverse 0 0.5 or sin inverse half which is 30 degrees and uh, x 2 e 
is equal to 0. So, x 1 e is in fact 30 degrees. Uh, this is of course, the equilibrium points are not unique. For example, x 1 e could also be pi minus uh, that is 180 minus 30 degrees. Okay? That is also an equilibrium point. So, remember that there is in the nonlinear systems, there may be more than one equilibrium point. Let us say the equilibrium point corresponding to sin inverse uh, sin inverse 0 0.5 is equal to 30 degrees and x 2 e is equal to 0 is the equilibrium point of our interest. Okay? So, the equilibrium point of our interest is 30 degrees and 0. Let us say, suppose this is our equilibrium point of interest. So, you can easily obtain the small signal model. Okay? The small signal model is essentially a linear model around this equilibrium point. Okay? So, this is eventually the small signal model of the system. One could also in fact, try to find out the equilibrium point uh, you know the linear model around another equilibrium point. Okay? So, for in this case for example, the other equilibrium point is x 1 e is equal to 150 degrees, x 2 e is equal to 0 and u naught of course, is the nominal value 0 0.5. And interestingly, uh, the properties of the, the small signal stability properties of different equilibrium points can be different. So, that is a very interesting and important thing which you should keep in mind. Okay? So, this is the general procedure when you want to linearize a nonlinear system around an equilibrium point. Okay? So, you can directly take partial derivatives and form the Jacobian matrix. Okay? Now, I, I wish to point out again that in the example we have considered and where I have shown you how to linearize uh, a particular differential equation or this uh, you know the the torque equation effectively, I have linearized the electrical torque, but it may not be directly evident that you are in fact doing exactly this. Okay? In fact, I have in fact taken out the partial derivative of the expression of T e with respect to psi d, psi q, i d and i q and plugged in the equilibrium values. Okay? So, this is but a more general way of I mean, general way of putting it. Okay? That is you take out the partial derivatives or evaluate this Jacobian at the equilibrium values of the states. So, eventually what you get is a linear model of a system okay, with a constant coefficient matrices. Okay. And another point to be noted is of course, that if there are multiple equilibrium points, you could have uh, different small signal models around different equilibrium points. And of course, the properties, the stability properties of the A matrix matrix uh, A matrices around different operating points or equilibrium points could be different. Okay? So, this is something you should keep in mind. Now, we go back to our uh, example again uh, of a synchronous machine. Okay?